Hi, Melissa Dealey here, back with day eight of my series on hormones through the month of October. So as an integrative health practitioner, one of the areas that I work with a lot of people on is sleep. And in fact, sleep is a real issue as a, almost a global epidemic these days of people who are not getting good sleep. The world is the sickest, most sleep deprived and most stressed out it has ever been. And so this is a huge topic. And sleep relates to hormones in that melatonin is a hormone that we need in order to be able to get into a deep sleep. And I want to talk to you about that and our diurnal rhythm. You, that may be a phrase you haven't heard of before, but the opposite of it is nocturnal. And we all know nocturnal. Those are the animals that are awake during the night. And here's the reality. And you might choose to completely disagree with me here, but the reality is that we as human beings are not nocturnal creatures. We are diurnal creatures. That means we should be awake during daylight and asleep when it is dark. If we go back to the beginning of time, that is when humans slept, was at night. They did not have electricity. They did not have computers. They did not have iPhones and all of these gadgets that we have today that keep us awake and keep us up and busy late into the night. They simply had to live by when the sun was up and when it was moonlight, right? And what developed or what works for the human body is the fact that our brain uses dusk as a trigger to know that it's time to start producing melatonin so that we can go to sleep. However, we do not experience dusk as they did back in our caveman days because of the advent of electricity. So ever since we've had electricity, the brain hasn't known when to start producing melatonin unless we actually do things that the brain starts to recognize as getting ready for bed. Now, all of you parents out there, it's highly likely that you have bedtime routines for your children. And I know I did when my kids were little. And I always thought it was just helpful to have that routine and structure and it helped our kids know what was coming next and it helped them be more cooperative at bedtime and it helped evenings go more smoothly. What I didn't understand at the time was how it was actually triggering the brain to recognize the habit and go, oh, it's bath time. I know what's coming next. After bath, they're going to brush their teeth, they're going to put on their jammies, they're going to have a bedtime story, and in about maybe half an hour, 45 minutes, it's going to be lights out. So I'm going to start producing melatonin. So that helps our children get into a really great rhythm and helps their body work for them so they can get into a good deep sleep. But what do we do as adults? In fact, what do we do when our kids get to be about age 10? We kind of leave them to their own devices. And by the time we're in adulthood, we no longer have a bedtime routine. So our brain has no idea when to start producing melatonin in order to help us get into a good sleep. In addition to that, we have a number of habits that also negatively impact our ability to get to sleep that you may not even be aware of. Because quite frankly, none of us have ever been taught how to sleep. We're just expected to know how to sleep because we're born and we can sleep and therefore we should know how to sleep for all of our lives. And yes, we might know how to sleep, but do we know how to optimize our sleep? So some other things that you may or may not be aware of that are negative imp negatively impacting your sleep, how close to bedtime are you eating your dinner? Is your body still in digestion mode when it's trying to go to sleep? What did you eat for dinner that can be negatively impacting your sleep? Because if it's, you know, loaded with sugar, that's going to impact your ability to sleep. If you've had coffee too late in the day, as I mentioned in one of my previous sessions, the half-life of coffee is eight hours. So if you have had coffee after, say, 2 p.m., you have half of that still in your system at 10 p.m. when you're trying to go to sleep. How much TV are you watching in the evening? 
how much time are you spending on a computer or a phone? Do you have the night light option turned on, the yellow light, rather than the blue light? Because the blue light that we're getting through computers and screens and from lighting in our house is similar to the blue light of the sun. So the brain recognizes that as being daytime and therefore awake time. But we can do many things to help with that using blue light blocking, blocking glasses in, when watching the television. On our computers, we can download free software that allows it at dusk to go into a yellow light so that that blue light isn't getting into our eyes. On our phones and tablets, we can choose night shift. If it's an Apple device on Android, there's options as well. So these are all little steps that you can be taking in order to help improve your ability to get to sleep because you don't have blue light coming into your eyes and telling your brain that it's daytime. Some other great tips for getting to sleep is just lowering our stress levels before bed. We have our sympathetic nervous system and we have our rest and digest nervous system. So sympathetic nervous system is fight or flight, chronic stress. And our rest and digest state is literally that. We can digest our meals when we're in that state and we can get to sleep when we're in that state. But if we're trying to go to bed after a busy day, still working through the night, trying to get everything done in the house, da 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 da, and just expect our body to be able to sleep on demand, it doesn't work that way. We have to let our body shift into that rest and digest state along with melatonin production in order to be able to get ourselves into a good sleep. So that bedtime hygiene routine is really important. Minimum four steps of things that you can do, maybe six every day for 30 days so the brain starts to recognize the pattern and clues in. Aha, uh -huh. she's doing this, so that means this is coming, this is coming, this is coming, and then bed. One of those habits could be having a notebook by your bed where you write down everything that you need to do tomorrow so that you're getting it out of your brain and into your notebook. I call it a brain dump. That way your brain doesn't have to hold on to it as you're trying to fall asleep. You can let it go. It'll be there in the morning. You're not going to forget anything. Your brain can let it go and doesn't have to have all of that swirling around in your head. The other thing I love to do is to write out three things I'm grateful for. Whether I write them out or whether I think them in my mind, either or, sometimes I like to write them in the evening, other times I like to wake up and write them in the morning. But at least think of the three things that you're grateful for because as you go through your day and you think about what happened and what you're grateful for, you're looking for good things, happy moments, right? And your brain can relax and your brain can go to sleep happy. And when your brain goes to sleep happy and it's not trying to hold on to everything that you need to not forget, it allows the brain to relax and it isn't getting woken up through the night as it's suddenly trying to hold on to things or because of fear or scared things because of the negative thoughts that you had running around in your head when you went to sleep. Going to sleep happy allows that relaxation and it allows for much better sleep. So that diurnal rhythm, coming back to that for human beings, is really to be going to sleep when it's dark and waking up when it's light. Now, of course, depending where we are in the world at wintertime, we might have way too many hours of darkness, but ideally around 10 p.m. is when your cortisol levels drop to a point where your melatonin levels are high and it's optimal time for falling asleep. And many people in this day and age are up at midnight or past midnight. And midnight really is considered middle of the night. We should be asleep by then. Our optimal sleep is happening from if we go to bed about 10 p.m. and sleep through until 6 a.m. And there's your eight hours of the seven to nine hours that all human beings need every night for optimal function, managing stress, etc., etc. So going to sleep 10 p.m., Waking up at 6 a.m., it's around 4 a.m. that your cortisol levels start rising again, your melatonin levels start dropping so that you have the energy to get your day started. For all of you that think you're night owls out there, and I realize there are people that work night shifts, and that's a whole different story, and I totally get that your sleep is messed up, and that's tough. I get that. But for people that 
choose to be night owls and it's not related to work and just feel like I sleep best if I go to bed at 2 a.m. You're pushing through that window past 10 p.m. and getting a second wind, yes, but you're never getting into that optimal deep sleep and rejuvenating, nourishing sleep that you will get if you go to bed more like 10 p.m. And I realize shifting from 2 a.m. or 1 a.m. to a 10 p.m. bedtime is significant, but if you do it in 15 minute increments per week over the course of you know, the next 12 weeks or however long it takes, it can be done. And that allows you to get back in alignment with nature's natural rhythm for the human body and notice the difference it makes in how you sleep and how you wake up feeling rejuvenated. Just wanted to leave you with all of that. I'll be back in a couple days. I'm going to start talking about the hormones of the thyroid. And if anybody is struggling with sleep and would like further help, I do have an online program that you can find on my website at betterbrainhealth.info. You can simply buy the online course. All the videos are there to walk you through all aspects of sleep and other aspects of rest. Uh, sleep is our physical rest, but there are other aspects of rest, such as social rest, cognitive rest, um, spiritual rest, etc. All important to know about. And you can work your way through that uh, program in order to help truly get yourself into some better sleep. It's so important. So do not take your sleep for granted. And I'll be back in a few days.